What's up, everybody? Welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. Well, you know, this couldn't have come at a better time. I had a, a client and another individual sent me a link, and Boston Lloyd just recently put up a video on his Facebook. I don't know if it's on his or his, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, YouTube as well, that all kind of tie into this together. And this is exactly what I've been fucking saying for the last three or four years. Well, three years, I think, I'm on YouTube, 2012. So four years this year that I've been on YouTube. That I've been fucking saying and preaching that fucking some people are like, Jerry, science is proving it fucking wrong now, blah, 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 and all the bullshit. And I'm like, you know what? You guys can say what you want, but the bottom line is science is there. Practical application is there. It's happening with people that I train. It's happening with myself. Boston's seeing it now. You know, Phil Hernan's been preaching it for the last fucking 15 years or whatever the case may be. And that is not all foods are created equal and not all foods are optimal for building muscle. Now, when I say optimal, I mean, what's going to build muscle the fastest? I mean, let's face facts. If you're watching this video, chances are you're building muscle slow or losing fat slow. And you don't want to be doing it that fucking pace. You want it as fast as humanly possible. You see people like myself, Boston, you see how fast we change. And it's no fucking surprise that we don't eat the Pop-Tarts, we don't eat the Pixie Sticks, we don't eat the gummy bears after the workout. We pretty much eat the same food. I mean, he does keto, I do keto. They're clean fucking foods, quote unquote bro foods, no such thing as a dirty food, Jerry, shut the fuck up. I mean, I've been around a long time, I know a lot more than you motherfuckers, other than the bullshit you read from forums or gimmicks that people are trying to fucking sell you. Yeah, that's right, gimmicks that people are trying to sell you with fucking fast metabolism, it, 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 it fucking boggles my mind. So, let's back up. First, Boston put up the video, <clears throat> excuse me, allergies are killing me today, about how he had eaten, uh, you know, introduced carbs to his diet after being on a ketogenic diet. And he decided to go from like one and a half cups to two cups, uh, two and a half cups of rice. Now, one would say, but Jerry, that's clean food. Why didn't it digest very well? He got a distended abdomen. He wasn't digesting. He couldn't shit. A lot of things were going on. He's like, what the fuck? All he did was add these carbohydrates. Now, it has been reported before Dr. Mauro Di Pasquale, when he first made the anabolic diet, that your body's enzymatic system actually changes. So when you go on a keto diet, your body reduces the enzymes for breaking down carbohydrates and sugar and increases the enzymes for breaking down fats. Now, it doesn't completely eliminate one or the other, but it does make a shift to make your body better adapted and better at using those fats rather than carbohydrates for energy. So which, in case if you gradually introduce the carbohydrates back in the diet, the body's enzymatic system will build that better up better again to, to burn these carbohydrates. Now, it's the same thing as stomach acid. Like your body doesn't just have a shitload of acid in the stomach all the time. When you put food in your stomach, it releases acid. It's the same type of thing. It increases enzymes, it decreases enzymes. It will adapt to what you're doing to it. Now, I got a, a client who decided to go, you know, against what I said. I didn't, I didn't tell him to do this and do a refeed with junk foods. He wanted to see how his body would respond. Now, it's part of my, partly my fault because people see my Instagram. They see me doing these certain refeeds with junk foods, etc. And they say, well, I want to try it too. Now, what people don't realize is the foods that I'm eating, I've actually specifically picked out based on how my body responds to them. It's not just random junk food. The food that I eat, like Elevation Burger... Elevation Burger does not digest like hamburgers from McDonald's. The Jersey Mike sub that I eat, I'll eat that sub, but within a half hour, 45 minutes, I'm hungry again. It digests different than Subway or something else. You know, the pizza in general, you know, it digests very slowly in me no matter what. And I usually have that for my last meal of the day because I want to make sure my meals are digesting well throughout the day so I don't get that big bloated stomach and not fucking feel good for the rest of the day. So they see that and they want to try it. This individual ate the food, gained five pounds, which a lot of people could say, wow, it's five pounds of food, it's five pounds of water. However, with myself, when I gain that weight over the weekend after I do a refeed, I'm, by Wednesday, I'm down to where I was at least, if not below where I started before the refeed. This individual kept the five pounds for the whole week, couldn't figure out what was going on. The food that he ate slowed down the digestion of that food and other foods in general. Therefore, his body was not digesting it well. It is in a, essentially a, a state of emergency trying to digest these foods, and it does slow down metabolism to try to specifically digest the shit that you put in your stomach and get rid of it. Okay, so then you have, you know, constipation, bloating, gas, you know, it, it's, it really does happen. You know, if anybody that's eaten fucking food that doesn't agree with them, not because it's bad food, but it doesn't digest well, you know that it just sits in your fucking stomach like a rock. What do you think is happening? Digestion is slowing. It's not speeding up trying to get rid of it. It's slowing down digest to everything else and the, the way your hormonal system works to try to get rid of that, that food in your stomach. Now, at the same time, <clears throat> an individual sent me, a, I don't remember who it was, this link to, um, it's in Boston Magazine. And the title is, if David Ludwig is right, everything we thought we knew about obesity and low-fat diet is wrong. Now, I'm not talking about specifically low-fat diet. I'm not talking about specifically carbohydrates. But this kind of touches upon what I'm trying to talk about. 
Um, the late 1990s, David Ludwig brought about 12 obese teenage boys into the clinic for the day and fed them each prescribed meals. It was a simple experiment. The meals had the same number of calories but different con kinds of foods. Um, at the time, it was generally believed that the high-fat diet led to a high-fat body. Um, Ludwig now treats obesity at Boston, Cl Boston Children's Hospital as a professor of nutrition at Harvard School of Public Health. Okay, Harvard School of Public Health. He's fucking to Harvard. So anybody's going to come out and say, Jerry, he's not a real doctor. Oh my God, he didn't get his fucking degree online. He's from Harvard. Um, he fed the teenage subjects uh, meals that had different ratings on the glycemic index, which measures how rapidly sugar rises in the bloodstream after a meal. For example, instant oatmeal is high GI, highly processed and refined. They quickly digest it and dump sugar into the blood in minutes. Old-fashioned oatmeal made from steel oats, a lower GI food, gets digested much more slowly, doing, doling out sugar into the bloodstream little by little. Over the next few hours, Ludwig and his team monitored how hungry the teenagers felt and how much they consumed in snacks. The teenagers on the high GI regimen, which means digest quickly like sugars, became ravenously hungry and ate a lot of snacks after meal. 80% or more calories in snacks than today than those who had the low IG meals, which were the steel cut oats. Just half of that calorie difference occurred after the day after. Uh, he said it could be explained most of the obesity epidemic in the United States. Now it says, uh, in the end, low fat diet strongly had a strongly negative effect when subjects were on it, they burned 325 fewer calories per day. That is, their metabolism slowed dramatically compared when they were on the low-carb diet, which did a much better job of burning calories rather than storing them. In effect, it was those on the low-carb GI diets put in an extra hour every day without lifting a finger. So in essence, it was like they actually did cardio without doing cardio. So now, basically what they're saying is, you know, they... Scientists realize that if you eat a certain food, it's going to be dumped into the bloodstream faster than another food. And that, in turn, causes hormonal changes. Those hormonal changes could cause you to eat, want to eat, could cause low blood sugar, high blood sugar, all these different effects. Now, that's what I've been fucking talking about. That's what I've been talking about time and time again. If I eat Elevation Burger, okay, not only am I not bloated, but an hour and a half later, I'm hungry again. I'm ready to eat. If I eat McDonald's, it could be six to eight hours that I don't even fucking feel like eating. Now... A lot of you guys that are eating these, these high calorie days, you know, I eat 5,300 calories, 5,500 calories. Your body's not even done digesting that the day you fucking ate it. It's digesting it the next day, the next day, the next day. That food is still in your stomach. Unless you're eating fucking 5,500 calories and shitting out 5,500 calories worth the fucking shit. There's still food in your body being digested. You know, like there was, I forget who the guy was, but when he fucking died and they opened him up, they found like 20 pounds of undigested fucking meat in his colon. So you're eating foods that are not fucking digesting. If you eat a, a meal before your workout, it's not something that is a fast-acting, clean carbohydrate, clean protein source with minimal fat. It's not digesting being used during that workout. It's going to be after the workout, that night, the next day. Food doesn't digest the way that a lot of these people think it is, where they're like, I just eat all my calories in one fucking sitting. You eat all your calories in fucking one sitting, intermittent fasting or whatever, the warrior diet, whatever you want to fucking choose to do. You're not going to digest 3,500 fucking calories by the time you wake up tomorrow morning. And it's going to put carbs in the muscle, use amino acids, it's going to take the fat and burn it. That's not going to happen like that. Now, are there rare individuals that that happens? So yeah, there's people with fast metabolisms out there who fucking do it. Next thing you know, they're on fucking YouTube and all over the internet promoting that this is how to do it. But I'm getting, I guarantee you Boston is too. I'm getting some of those clients. I'm getting a lot of those clients. The people that are fucking hiring these people to eat the fucking Pop-Tarts and the gummy bears and all the bullshit. And they're coming to us saying, I don't know what the fuck happened. I put on 20 pounds of fat. And then the person told me, wow, that's what happens. You have to put on the fat to be able to take off the fat later. It doesn't make any fucking sense. So I think that there's, you know, still, you know, nowadays, more so than three years ago, I think a lot of people have tried the IFYM with the junk foods, have failed miserably at it, have hired other coaches and trainers, have learned on their own that it's fucking not working for them, specifically because it doesn't work for everybody. I mean, I know for a fact that I can eat certain foods and my body has a certain reaction. It's a negative reaction to that food. It's inflammation, it's water retention, it's slow digesting. If you're wanting to get the best results you can possibly get, you get in the gym, you stimulate the muscle, you get out, you recover, you grow. You have to feed your body at the same time. Now what's the best optimal way? Not the only way, but the optimal way. I don't give a fuck if there's a million ways. I want shit to be done. I don't want to fucking walk 20 miles to the supermarket when I can literally cross the street and it's right there. I don't want to go all the way down and come all the way back up. I want to go directly across the street, 10 steps and be at the grocery store. What's the optimal way to feed your body? It's like an IV. When you feed your body a medication, the optimal way to feed the medication is through an IV. It's not taking fucking 5,000 milligrams of something in your stomach and fucking hoping that it fucking gets there. They stick an IV in your arm when they need to get something in there directly and have it work the optimally and most efficiently. So if you're feeding your body clean foods around the clock at certain intervals, 
I mean, I'm not even saying it has to be every two or three hours. It could be every three, five hours, two hours, hour and a half, four hours, whatever the case may be. But you're going to fucking digest that shit optimally and it'll be there when you need it. And if it's digested, excuse me, if it's a clean food, it's going to digest quickly and be used quickly rather than the fucking junk foods. Now, you know, we see Rich Piana right now gaining a shitload of fucking muscle weight. And, you know, people are like, wow, he's on this, he's on that. You guys don't understand. Have you seen the way that guy's eating? He is eating some junk food, but he's eating a lot of fucking clean foods and using a lot of supplements like real food and shit that are clean calories going in his body. He's going to the gym and training with weights. He's taking his fucking drugs. He's sleeping. He's growing faster than a lot of motherfuckers I've ever seen in my entire life. Now, is he growing muscle faster? Is he regaining muscle memory? That, yes, it's muscle memory. He's been big before like that. But the case is, not many people are doing that. I'm not seeing people fucking growing faster nowadays with all the knowledge that's out there. I'm seeing them growing slower. I'm seeing it taking them longer to accomplish results. And people telling them, it's okay. It's going to take this amount of time. Bullshit. It'll take half the time if you do things optimally. But I get it. Nobody wants to give up the donuts and the Pop-Tarts and the beer. I get it. But the bottom line is what you're trying to do, that is the optimal, efficient road to do it. And, you know, doctors say it. Fucking people in the fitness industry say it. The only motherfuckers that are not saying it are these fucking little wise-ass young motherfuckers who want to make a buck by hiring you and giving you fucking, by you hiring them and you, them giving you fucking gummy bears as your post-workout fucking thing. But how's that working out for you when you're fucking three months later, you're hiring me or Boston or one of these other guys? Exactly. Biosetraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below, but don't fight. www.biosetraining.com is a blog. It's the Foods Make a Difference Bicep, and we're out.